Welcome to the ProSeed Halftime Report. If you need seed, think ProSeed. Join us today, sales manager David Blue. David, it's great to have you here, man. Hey, thanks uh, for having me back. ProSeed. Great brand, great name in our community. What, what's the mission? What makes you guys special? You know, what we're trying to be is we're trying to be the best regional seed company out there. And we obviously do that, uh, number one, through great products. We have that. We've, everyone's heard about that. But uh, we really try and be a local member of every community. We're trying to, uh, we're trying to really invest back. Um, our sales guys or our crew, our, our employees, we have a great crew that they really care about uh, who they work with and, and the job they do. And, and um, they're school board officials, they're hockey coaches, they're, they're everything, right? So, so we really, uh, we're proud of how invested we are in, in our customers' communities. Talk a little bit about that, what you guys are doing to give back to your communities. Well, you know, just throughout uh, lots of different volunteer work and whatnot, um, you know, there's one great program that I don't know that we've, we've really spoken about much, but we do something every Christmas time where every one of our customers, every one of our, our retail stores gets to choose um, a, a recipient of a donation that we give back, you know, based off of sales and whatnot. So, so we've been able to give back to fire departments. We've given to local schools, given to youth sports, high schools, whatnot. So we've really been able to uh, to give back, right? And we understand it's full circle. You support us, we support you back, and, and we're proud of that. And, you know, to the tune of, I think it's been about 125 grand over the last wow. uh, few years, right? So, so it's something we're proud of and something that we want to continue with. And then the Right Choice program, always a great program you guys got going on this Always year a well. great program. You know, it's been, I think this is our eighth year of doing it, and it's, it's gone over well. So, you know, it's another thing. You know, we try and be fun to work with. We try and do things the right way. So, so hopefully everybody likes it. And if you have any questions, go to uh, www.proceed.net. Thank you very much, David. Appreciate it a bunch. Always great Thank to you. have you in. Again, check them out online. It's proceed.net. And stay with us. Much more coming up right here on the Proceed Halftime Report. Welcome into our Fargo studios, the Proceed Halftime Report. The Bison leading Western Illinois 17-7. to Kind of a slow start again for the Bison offensively. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. the good news is they've got a 10-point halftime lead. And that's what's most important. That is what's most important. And again, at the they end of did the day, not panic. All you care about is that final score on your side, saying more numbers than the final score on the other side. Is that how sports side. work? That is how the football oh, game goodness, should go. I wouldn't know that, but let's go. Let's take a look at how we got to where we are. Yeah, it was kind of a slow start for both of these teams. Like we said, they were uh, slow to slow to get anything going really on either end of the football field. But here are the Bison come out showing something different. The Wildcat. The Wildcat formation. Bruce Anderson taking the direct snap as Easton goes off to a wide receiver. It's just something that the Bison have had in their pocket that they put on film now that other teams have to prepare for. Yeah, they really wanted to show it. They can't get any closer, though. 47-yard field goal for Cam Peterson. Really good for Cam Peterson to hit this field goal outside in the elements, get some confidence back. He's had a rough couple of go at his last couple field goal attempts, so good for Cam to get the Bison on the board. Yeah, it's a season long for him. Now, on to the Western Illinois offense. Sean McGuire, a real slippery one. He pulls off some, he, he escapes Pressure quite a few times, get some good passes off here. Jalen Allison thinking that he had an interception there. And then on this one, McGuire is able to shed off a would-be sack. And then just backyard football, throw it up and make your guy make a play. Yeah, some great catches as well out there. Well, this drive carries over into the second quarter. They get a third down conversion. It leads to McGuire with a touchdown pass here. And this is him connecting with Isaiah LaShore there in the end zone. LaShore making a heck of a grab going up and getting that football and it gives Western the lead. Yeah, 7-3 Western Illinois here. Bison, now they take a minute to get going, but boy, a completely different looking drive here having their way with the with the Leathernecks. And Bruce Anderson gets a little dinged up on this one and we told we've been told by Ryan Gellner that he's okay. He should be back into this game. Well, the Bison on this drive showing that delta formation a couple times. This time, Easton Stick keeping it, and he's off to the races. Back-to-back -back weeks, Easton Stick should have had a long touchdown run, but he gets stopped just short of the goal line. This time, it's Lance Dunn punching it in. Yeah, an eight plays, 75-yard drive, 10-7 in DSU leading now. Lance Dunn doing a great little dance there in the end zone. <laughs> Western driving again here. McGuire dropping back. Marquise Bridges lays the hit. Fumbled and Dan Marlette. He scoots, he scoots, and he will score. That's back to back weeks for Marquise Bridges coming up with huge defensive plays. This time he forces the fumble. He had the interception last week against Northern Iowa. And Dan Marlette, Johnny on the spot, picks his head up and takes the ball into the end zone, giving the Bison a 17 7 lead. Let's take a look at our halftime stats brought to you by the North Dakota Certified Seed Producers. And as you can see in this one, it's kind of like last. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the, 
South Dakota State game, if you will, where one team is getting it done on the ground, that's NDSU, and the other team is getting it done through the air, that's Western Illinois, pretty much even in terms of yards. But you can see how the Bison are getting it done. The Bison are averaging four, four yards a carry, so they're still getting it done efficiently on the ground the but turnovers. that's down from the seven seven right. and a half whatever yes. it is that they've been averaging throughout the season and, if, and a majority of those yards rushing came in that second quarter but if you ask any coach that you're gonna take four yards of carry you'll take four yards of carry that's a first down every three plays so you'll take that for the bison probably not as efficient as they want it to be but that's where they are Darius Shepard with a couple drops in this one as well I think that's just the the result of you can't ignore Darius Shepard anymore. Yeah. You know, uh, this week Chris Kleiman was asked in the press conference if he was, you know, if they've been targeting him too much. You know, why why aren't you spreading it out? And he said, well, if nobody's going to mark him, <laughs> hey, you're, gonna leave you're not going to cover <laughs> Darius Shepard. We're going to throw it to him as many times as we can. I think he's getting a little bit more pressure, and that's where this some of this is coming the, from. The Bison have ten first downs in this uh, first half seven for Western Illinois. Uh, those were your North, your first half stats brought to you by the North Dakota Certified Seed Producers. We're going to step aside when we come back. Plenty of action around the Missouri Valley Football Conference. We'll take a look at some of those scores, including a game that's going on right now that's got some interest in the area. That's still to come here in the Proceed Halftime Report. Welcome back inside the Proceed Halftime Report in our Fargo studios. North Dakota State leads Western Illinois 17-7 to at the halftime break. Let's take a look at some other action going around the Missouri Valley Football Conference. In action at halftime as well, Northern Iowa has a 21-13 lead at, over South Dakota. That game in South Dakota at the Dakota Dome. Uh, other action happening today, Missouri State able to beat Indiana State 29-26. Illinois State... Able to roll Southern Illinois 51 to 3 and South Dakota State a 36 to 7 winner over Youngstown State. Not good for Youngstown. They are reeling right now. South Dakota State able to uh, pick up back to back wins after dropping that one against the Bison. Yeah, a, a tough stretch for Youngstown State. Not quite what I was expecting from them, but good to see the Jackrabbits kind of bounce back. This Now we're at the point in the season where I start rooting for SDSU <laughs> because the Bison have beaten them. So right, it's so all I about the strength of your win. wins here. Yeah, need that you need good SDSU win. That's what you need. <laughs> uh, Youngstown State, they're now 2 and 4, 1 and 2 in Missouri Valley play. Uh, and it doesn't seem to get any easier. They still have the Bison on the schedule. The Bison will play Illinois State next week, and that's going to be a great game. Five and one, Illinois State is when they come into the Fargo. Well, it was so a great game last year when they yeah. played out in Normal. So ah, the Snow Bowl. How can we ever forget? What yeah. an amazing game that it, was. It was fantastic because we were here yeah. in studio. Uh, inside, that was yeah. great. All right, that'll do it for your Proceed Halftime Report. We'll send you back out to Western Illinois, Macomb, Illinois, and uh, probably a couple cold guys themselves. Brian Sean Lee Timmerman with the game right after this.